Hi, so in today's video, we will see how we can download the Wireshark tool uh, from the internet, install it properly on Windows, uh, because that is what most of the people watching this video might be using. And we will see how to use Wireshark to capture packets on the local interface, whether it's your Wi-Fi or the wired Ethernet interface. And uh, we can analyze those packets to look at the different uh, layers of data which the different uh, layers of TCP IP kind of add to the message in the application layer. We will then move on to um, analyze already saved capture file which um, the Wireshark website gives you for HTTP and see how HTTP GET requests are done or what DNS queries are done in that packet. Uh, so let's get started. So start the browser go to wireshark.org and click on download the windows installer 64 bit okay now it has gotten downloaded so i'll just click on the installer and okay click on next um, read the license agreement click on noted install everything here click on next i do not want a quick launch icon start menu is just fine desktop icon okay default location is fine for me and make sure to install npcap this is the packet capture driver that Wireshark needs to be able to capture packets on your network interfaces. There is no need to install USB PCAP for now. Just give it some time. In the middle of the installation, it will ask you more things about NPCAP. So make sure you read the license agreement for NPCAP and say I agree. Uh, do not check or click on any of these options for smooth operation of Wireshark. When it is installed, you click on next and finish. And then the rest of Wireshark will continue to install. Once it is done installing, you click on next and please reboot your computer. Okay, after installing Wireshark and the NPCAP driver, I restarted my computer and now we can start Wireshark. So over here, try to figure out your primary internet interface. In my case, it is Wi-Fi. In your case, it could be uh, any one of these local area connections. Just, just figure out the one that has these uh, wiggly lines because that is where the internet traffic is moving, right? It is moving through that interface. So just figure out. If you're using Wi-Fi, it is more, most likely going to be Wi-Fi. So if you click on that and start capturing packets here. So notice this icon, just click on that, okay? And then you go to the browser, maybe go to some news website and just open some random news articles. Okay, this will open some websites, some DNS queries will happen and, and some HTTP traffic might go. So let's see how all of that works. So I'll just minimize this and I will stop the capture. Just see how many packets got captured, some 42,000 packets or maybe more than that got captured, okay? So to look at a small subset of all of these uh, thousands of packets, you can apply a display filter. So just say DNS, okay? So this will show you all the DNS protocol packets. 
for example what happened here so if i click on any one of these packets you can see that the source was my computer the destination is google's dns and what has happened so the entire packet that that went on my wi-fi interface is kind of given here in hexadecimal okay at the bottom here now this has got multiple parts if you know about uh, encapsulation and decapsulation you probably already know that well in, in in this particular packet there is a dns part which is the application layer part if you click on that then the blue portion that you see the subset of the packet that is the dns part only then the dns packets usually go in udp datagrams and if you click on udp you see the extra part that udp added in blue on top of dns well it encapsulated the dns message inside a udp uh, datagram okay then if you click on ip then you look at the extra information that the internet protocol ipv4 here added on top of udp then finally if you click on ethernet you see the extra information that the ethernet interface on, on, on my computer added on top of whatever IP had added, right? So let's look at all of these different layers in details. So if I expand DNS and if I click on question, then you see one, right? At the bottom here also, one is highlighted, right? That is part of the packet where that, that piece of information, like number of questions is one goes, right? There are no answers here because it is a query packet. And then if you expand the query here and click on that, you see that we're trying to figure out the IP address of client.wns.windows.com, right? Type A address for that. And that part is also highlighted in the entire packet in blue at the bottom. If you look here, you see an arrow here. Well, that is the DNS query. The reply for that, Wireshark can figure it out for you and it can highlight that using this kind of an arrow here. Okay, so if I click on that, then you see that the roles of all of these IP addresses have kind of reversed. Now, whatever was the source has become the destination and the destination has become the source and rightfully expected, that is, that is expected. And here you look at the entire packet, well, then expand the DNS part and you see it's the same um, one question was there and there are two answer resource records here to answer resource records in the dns response so in the query well we'll have the same query client.wns.windows.com type a but this time we have answers in the response so looks like uh, the real name for what we were looking for well it is this because it's a c name record and uh, this wns.notify traffic manager.net ip address is given in the other answer resource record right its ip address is given right here 20.198.119.84 so this is how you can analyze dns packets for example one particular case in wireshark and you can also look at uh, the udp protocol data right click on that source port 53 well at the bottom here you see 35 highlighted right port numbers are 16 bit numbers so 16 bits are highlighted each hexadecimal symbol there is 4 bits so 4 into 4 is 16 and well don't think that 53 has been reversed because 16 into 3 is 48 plus 5 is 53 so the 35 in hexadecimal is actually 53 in decimal okay and uh, the destination port you see it, it gets highlighted the length and rest of the stuff gets highlighted at the bottom so parts of the udp right if you expand the internet protocol version 4 the ip layer then you can uh, look at the most interesting parts like the source address look at that it's in it's in hexadecimal also 8888 fortunately it's the same thing in hexadecimal at the bottom but the destination address 192 it is c0 if you take c0 and convert that from hexadecimal to decimal you will get 192 right so this is how you can look at bits and pieces of the layers that the tcp ip stack adds on top of the application layer message Okay, so now this is something that I captured on my interface. What if you want to analyze already captured data, right? So um, you can go to the internet, 
and search for Wireshark captures and go to sample captures in the Wireshark wiki, right? Click on that. And here you search for, for example, various protocols are there. You can study those protocols, but I'll go to the hypertext transport protocol, the HTTP. Click on that and I'll just download the most simple file here, http.cap. Okay, that file got downloaded. I'll go to Wireshark. I'll say file open and uh, go to downloads and open that file. And it will say, do you want to save your capture which you have done before? If you want to take a look at your own capture that you did, the DNS packets we were looking at, then sure, you can go ahead and uh, save that and take a look at that later. But right now we're looking at someone else's capture, right? Which we downloaded from the Wireshark website. So I'll say continue without saving and I'll get rid of this display filter here so you can see more packets. So what has happened here, uh, a TCP connection has gotten established. You can see the SYN, SYN ACK, ACK, the regular TCP handshake that has happened and then an HTTP GET request has gone out. Okay, so you can look at the bits and pieces of the HTTP protocol as you can see. The, the GET is the method then the URL, then the host, you click on the host, you can see that part here at the bottom, right? You can look at all of these. Uh, this is a persistent connection, right? Because connection is keep alive. So you can look at all of these things in the HTTP GET request. And then you look at this arrow here. If you scroll to the bottom, then you look at this arrow here. So that is the response for that request. And the data is right here. It is an XML, you, you see. This is a web page in HTML, which was returned as part of the response for the get request. Similarly, if you just search for DNS here, you look at uh, the fact that only one DNS query has happened and you click on that. It's This is the query and the other one is its response. Uh, we looked for this. What is the IPv4? That's a type A resource record for page add to google syndication.com and in the response we have the response like this has got another name page add to dot google dot com page add to dot google dot com yet has another name page add dot google dot aka dns dot net that page add dot google dot aka dns dot net then has two ipv4 addresses which have been given to us right so what are we doing with that IP address? So let's look at that. So this is the response. And in the response, we get this 216.239.59.99 as one IP address. And immediately we send an HTTP GET request. You see, that is the destination IP address. So we are using the information of the DNS response to send an HTTP GET request, right? And this GET request's response is actually coming here. Okay, 200, okay, and this is what you get as the response. And you can look at the rest of the things like the TCP information, the IPv4 information, how all of these layers get added to the application layer message, one on top of each other, encapsulation, decapsulation, all of these things. In the Ethernet protocol, you can look at the destination hardware address, the source hardware address, right? In the IPv4 layer, you can look at most important parts are the source IP address and the destination IP address. In the TCP, there are multiple things like sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers. Um, at an introductory level, the most important parts are the ports, right? The source port, destination port. The source port, it's coming from an HTTP server. That's why the source port is 80, right? Um, and then the HTTP packet, right? HTTP response, 200, okay. And a bunch of different things which you expect in an HTTP response to a GET request. That is all I had to discuss about Wireshark. You can do many more things, but this is just um, the very basic of what you can do with Wireshark. Hope you can install it and start capturing. Remember to stop capturing because it captures thousands of packets depending on the traffic on your computer. And you can analyze different kinds of protocols like TCP, IP, HTTP, DNS, all protocols, you know, all the protocols almost out there are supported by Wireshark. It will analyze the packet for you, show the information in a nice structured manner. Thank you.